about the thimble hooks. Thanks for stopping by. So did you miss me? Okay, I was gone over the summer off of YouTube, but I have been designing like crazy and I've been answering a lot of questions and this by far is the question that I get most often. How many do I chain for my horizontal interlock for insert blanket size here? I can't answer that for everybody because I have no idea. It depends on your hook size, your yarn size, and your personal tension. Therefore, I came up with a way to use my magic formula so that you can figure it out for yourself. I had somebody asked me last week, how many should I chain for a king and a queen and a throw? I don't know, but we can use my magic formula. We'd have to do one extra step. So I made a lovey here, which is 12 by 12. I used cupcake, Lion Brand cupcake, which is, I believe it's a three, it's a three weight. And I used a five millimeter hook. That's what I used for this project. You can use whatever you want, but you have to do this next step. So what you do is you make one square using your yarn that you're going to use and the hook that you're going to use, make one square, just one. And now we're going to do this. Very, very simple. Measure it. And of course it's going to be sideways. See the my vertical bars are going this way because this is the horizontal so we're going to measure from corner to corner this way. I'm just going to measure and get an approximation and this one ended up being about two and one quarter inches. Alright so my magic formula is how many posts wide do you want your square? This was a five by five. Again, you can make a 10 by 10, a 8 by 8, whatever you want. But I used a 5 by 5, so I'm going to do 5 right here. 5. And that number will always be times 2. Plus 1. Times how many squares you want. Right now, we want one. So that's going to tell you how to figure out how to make your very first single only one square. And that whole answer plus one is your first square. So this is five times two plus one is eleven times one square is eleven plus one it's 12. Easy peasy. So that's how many I need to chain to make my one square. So that's the part you do first. Then we measured this and I got, it's about 2.25 inches. Measuring from here to here. Now you want to decide what size blanket you want. So if you make a lovey, this is a 12 by 12, just a little lovey, just an itty bitty little security blanket. Just decide what size blanket you want and find the, find the measurements for it. Um, for example, a king is 106 by 96 or a crib blanket is 40 by 60. And there's standardized lists for this kind of thing all over the place. Should be really easy to find. So decide what you want to make. So example, if you wanted to make a queen size blanket, a queen size blanket is 90 by 96. That's the general dimensions of a queen size blanket. So what we want to do is take this number right here and one of these dimensions I would go with the 90. So what we want to do is take 90 and divide it by your 2.25 which is one square you want to know how many squares you need to make it 90 and that equals 40. So now we're going to plug those numbers back into my magic formula. So we still have the 5, 5 posts wide times 2 plus 1 times this number times 40 plus one. So this is the number you're trying to find right here is how many squares 
will my 90 inches be based on what I want to create. So then you do this math. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11 times 40 is 440 plus 1 is you will be chaining 441 to get a queen size blanket. So just have to remember my formula. It's really, really easy. The number of posts that you want, your square to be, times 2 plus 1, and then times how many squares you need to get your dimensions. It's really, really easy peasy. So you can see that my lovey, after I fill in my gaps right here and fill in the corners, and I put a ruffle on it, because you really should always finish off an interlock. The edges just aren't as pretty like this. You really should have some kind of a border. I just like to put a ruffle on it because it's already interesting and has texture. You don't need it to be too ornate. But you can see now that I made a lovey using this math. When you're all done, you're going to end up with approximately 12 by 12, which is what size a lovey is. If you want to make sure that you're really going to hit these dimensions and just don't want it to be a little bit too short or you have somewhere very specific that you want it to be, like cover this, I want it to cover the bed exactly perfect, you can always add one more to this number right here. So then you do this math and that would be 41. So you're adding one more square and that would increase your chain size for one more square. And of course we want to fill in our gaps. Show you that really fast, really fast. I have a video on how to fill in these little gaps. Put it right up here somewhere. Fill in these little gaps. Do exactly what you have been doing the whole time. You should be an expert at this by now. And go pull through two, pull through two, pull through two pull through two. I have when you have three loops left on your hook, you pull through all three. That is a Tunisian simple stitch reduce. That's all we need to do. Now you skip over to this guy right here because this one's already been used in the reduce. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then I have to go over here and I will do the same thing. Pull through two, pull through two, and I have three left on my hook, pull through all three. And that's how we reduce. Fill in our little corners. Finish this up really fast. There's my last three, pull through all three, and then do our little extra slip stitch like we always do at the end of our square. All right, now to do the corner, you want to pick up as many as you have bars across. So this was a five. I'm going to pick up five. One, two, three, four, and five. And go back like normal. Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two and pull through two. Now for the next row we want to reduce twice. So we want to do a Tunisian simple stitch two together. So we want to go under the first bar and the second bar and then grab our yarn, pull up a loop, and the next bar pull up a loop, and in this last this last vertical bar and the little side piece that we always have to go under that little side stitch go through both of those. So now I've pulled up I only have four loops on my hook. Now we'll do the pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. See how it's starting to turn into a little triangle? Now for the next one, I want to go under, pull up a loop, and I want to reduce at the end, so the last vertical bar and this little side stitch get two together. And I have three stitches, pull through all three, and then you can chain one. There you go. So if you chose not to do a 5 by 5 square, 
you chose to make it bigger or smaller. Either way, either way is fine. Make it any way you want to. Because when you're going to make this corner, you want to pull up as many loops on your hook as you have vertical bars and reduce the first time and the very last time until you get to your corner. The video on that also, maybe we can put that right here. But there we go, and then a ruffle, a simple ruffle is five double crochets using the same hook that you use the whole time. Five doubles or five half doubles, doesn't matter. Five half doubles in the same stitch all the way around. That's all there is to it. So these are double crochets right here. And these are half doubles. Not a whole lot different. Still gives a nice look. Either way is perfect. Single crochet I think is a little bit too small. It doesn't ruffle very nicely. But a double and a half double both work beautifully. So there's my almost complete levy. I just have a little bit more to do on my border. But your magic is making one square and doing the measurements for your tension, your yarn, and your hook. Voila! So there you go. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back soon. Thanks. Bye!